are live. Thank you very much to everybody for joining me. As always with these live streams, please let me know if you can hear me in the chat. Uh, and welcome to a tutorial and playthrough of Sniper Elite. New game, come from Rebellion Unplugged. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that I'm joined by both of the designers tonight. So Mr. David Thompson. Hey, how's it going? Good, good, good. And in the top right, we have Roger. Now, I've not said your surname. Let's see if I pronounce this correctly. Is it just Tankersley? Tankersley, exactly right. Tankersley. Yeah. Hello, everybody. There you go. Yeah. Well done. Um, people in the chat, let us know if you can hear them OK and if the volume levels are OK. Um, so what's going to happen is I'm going to be giving you an overview of how the game plays first. Then we're going to play the game, but I will cover the, the actual specific details during the playthrough itself. So to give you an idea of what the game is about, this game is based on the very popular computer game series, Sniper Elite. Uh, it is a one versus many game, minimum of two players, one player playing the sniper, the other player playing the defenders. You can play up to three players as the defenders. You'll notice if we just put the side view on, there we go. Uh, what we've got is we've got three defenders with the yellow bases, three defenders with the red bases, and three defenders with the black bases. Each of these is a squad, and you can basically, if you're only playing one player as the defenders, you play all three squads. Tonight, me and David are playing the defenders, so we are controlling one squad each. David's got the red squad, I've got the black squad, and we'll kind of control the yellow squad between us. Uh, and if you were three players of the defenders, you would each play a squad. Now, saying that, if you are the defenders, it is a you've got to cooperate together. You can't have three players just doing their own thing, not talking to each other. The objective of the game for the sniper is to complete two objectives. So the sniper has an objective deck of cards, which is basically uh, nine cards which match the nine numbered objectives on the board. Now, I didn't know this, but it's in the rule book that during World War II, uh, soldiers used playing cards to sneak information to prisoners of war. Uh, that's what was done. So that is why thematically these are playing cards in the game that look like they're, they're ripped. And what happens is Roger, before the game has started, shuffled his deck of objective cards, drawn two of these at random. They are his two objectives he's got to complete. With the caveat that there are suits on these cards and he cannot have two objectives from the same suit. Now, what that is in the game itself is you cannot have two objectives in the same sector. So, for example, if Roger had drawn five and nine, they're both in the yellow sector, he can't have those objectives. That's the case, chooses which one to put to the bottom of the deck, draws a replacement, as long as that's <coughs> also not in the yellow sector, then he keeps it. So, you've got your two objectives, Roger. We don't know what they are. But no. basically, if Roger moves into those areas on the board and performs the complete and objective action, if he does that on both of them, uh, then he's won the game immediately. The other thing that the sniper uses is loadout cards. Now, there is a big deck of loadout cards. This is actually the loadout cards from the base game and the expansion. But this is essentially equipment. Um, now, when you're first playing the game, you probably just want to shuffle these and pick some at random. Once you know the game, you will want to choose specific pieces of equipment. Uh, possibly for them. Uh, and Roger, you've got three loadout cards that you've chosen. That's right, I do. Yep. Yeah. And we don't, we don't know what they are. Now, right. once that's been done, the defenders set up on the map is fixed. They are in specific locations depending on the type of the board. But we get to choose specialists. So there are six specialists in the game. Kennel Master, the Medic, Sniper, the Radio Operator, the Jaeger, and the Scout. Uh, and we choose those. But importantly, we choose those after uh, the sniper has chosen the loadout cards. So, David, you've chosen the sniper. Uh, I've chosen the medic. And then for the yellow one, we've chosen the kennel master. Now, you'll notice that each of these cards has two cubes on it. That's because each of these cards has a special ability printed on it twice per game. And when you use it, you remove one of them from it. Now, if we just take a closer look at, I press that button, is that going to work? Yeah. We're going to have a closer look now at the black square. You'll notice this one here with the iron cross on its base, this is the officer. So this is a squad. These units collectively are called uh, units. This is an officer, and these two are soldiers. This special ability here, the medic card, uh, refers to the officer. So this officer is a medic and has that special ability twice. Okay. Hey, Paul, I'm going to interrupt you. You, you yep. just saw a lot of comments about your audio uh, being choppy, cutting in oh, and out. Right. Okay, I think I know why that is, and I will fix that. Thank you very much for spotting that. I uh, increased the noise gate a bit. Move it back down. Hopefully that's better now. Let, let me know if that is any better. 
Um, so yeah, so we've, we've chosen those things. Now, up here, we have, a, it's a turn track, basically. Uh, what happens is whenever it is the defender's turn, we get to do actions using these cubes, and when we do the action, we move the cube down. And that sounds, uh, that, that reflects the fact that we've taken an action. When all of the cubes are on the nine space, that represents the fact that we've, we've taken our turn, and then it is over to the sniper. So what happens is the sniper goes first, then the defenders take a turn, etc., etc. Every time we take a turn, these cubes are going to move down. If these cubes ever get to the one space, then that is the sniper's last turn. If the sniper then doesn't win by that turn, then it's game over. He's run out of time. However, I mentioned that the sniper has to complete two objectives. When the sniper has completed his first objective, all of those cubes go back to the start. So effectively, it's a maximum of 20 rounds, is that right? Yeah, 19. 19-ish, yeah. 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 It's not going to last that long. <laughs> Unless no, Roger right. sneaks around for 10 turns not doing anything. <laughs> Um, right. <laughs> right. How else do the defenders win? This is a wound marker. And if we wound the sniper twice, then it's game over. So the first time the sniper is wounded, we flip the marker over. The second time they're wounded, it's game over. So just to recap, the sniper's objective is to complete both objectives. That's the only way they can win. For the defenders, we either force the sniper to run out of time or we wound the sniper twice. That's how you win the game. There are uh, a double-sided map that comes with the base game. There's also an expansion set with another double-sided map. We'll show them at the end. But what you're not seeing is you're not seeing the hidden movement board. So the sniper has a hidden movement board, which you'll notice is reflecting in the lights because this, uh, this uses a dry erase marker. So this is actually not the one for this map. This is a different one. But Roger has got this, and he's going to be using this to track his hidden movement in the game. The other thing is the shot bag. So there's a shot bag here. And we fill the shot bag at the start of the game with these tokens. We have six aim tokens, three recoil tokens, and two noise tokens. So these are going to go in the bag, except what Roger doesn't know is that I've actually been practicing as a stage magician. So my sleight of hand skills are such that I've just taken out the six aim tokens without him realizing it. And it's all noise now? It's, it's okay. It's all noise tokens. All noise. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's all noise tokens in there. I need to increase my volume, apparently. There we go. I can turn my volume up a bit. There we go. Hopefully that's better. Right. I think that's probably enough to start with. So the sniper takes the first turn in the game. Roger's going to be taking his turn now, but I'll let you know what he's doing. First of all, he has to choose where he's coming in. And he has to choose one of these four starting points, either that yellow one, that white one, that black one, or that red one. But he cannot come in in a sector where he has an objective. So if his objectives, for example, was six and three, then he cannot come in on the yellow or the black starting point. He has to come in on the white or the red. Once he's chosen his starting point, uh, the first thing that he has to do on the first turn of the game is to move. Now, whenever the sniper moves, he can move zero, one, two, or three spaces, except on the first turn of the game, he has to move at least one. If he moves zero or one, then he's sneaking around all quiet like and nobody hears him. However, if he moves two or three spaces, then any of the defenders who are adjacent to him, either at the start of the sniper's movement, at the end of the sniper's movement, or during the sniper's movement, will be alerted. And what happens in that case is Roger will say, this soldier has heard something. That's all. We don't know where he's heard anything. We just know that a particular soldier has heard something. <coughs> as, long as, the, as long as the sniper moves slowly, not going to make any noise, we're not going to know where he is. Um, but if he does move either two or three spaces, then if there is a soldier nearby, they're going to hear something. Right, Roger, have you taken your first turn? I'm done. No one was alerted. No one knows anything. Right, okay. Now, the other thing that Roger could have done, as well as move, is to shoot. So every single turn of the game, the sniper can move, uh, use a loadout card, and perform one action. And the action could be to shoot. And those three things can be done in any order. Uh, except for the first turn of the game where the movement has to be the first thing. So Roger has not shot, which means we've no idea where he is, we've no idea what his objectives are, and he's not alerted us. So, David, it's up to us as the defenders. Now, the defenders, I mentioned, have got these action cubes. So basically, we've got two actions for each squad, and when we take an action, we move the marker down. 
there are multiple things that you can do with the actions which are summarized on a little handy dandy reference card here but there is one action which uses both cubes and that is gather intel are we going to do gather intel as the start of the game yes it, it seems yes. to be the standard opening move so it's gather really intel move. uses both cubes of a squad and what we do is we gathering intel for the particular sector and the officer for that squad has to be in that sector and then if the sniper is in that sector they have to say whether they're in that sector or not so what do we think i mean is it is it guesswork at this stage as to which one we pick or well there's some there's some that are better than others based on the map like this map yellow is probably the least likely scenario for him to stay in in the first mm -hmm. turn right because of this so area, i think this yeah he, Right. Really, the only reason you would stay in yellow is if you're trying to be super sneaky at the top there where you pointed is you're trying to be super sneaky or to be in yellow if you started in red and moved to yellow. So so I say we don't gather intel in yellow for now. OK. Um, but as for as far as red or black, I'm 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 fine with either. Whatever you think. Um, I th I'm thinking. So if he started on black, then we know he doesn't have an objective in black, but he could quite yeah. easily get into red, Go into red. Yep. from from black right. yeah whereas if he started in red mm -hmm. he's either in red or yellow he's not going to be in black correct yep so if we gather intel on oh he could have actually started on white and gone over to black that's right yeah that could be yeah you can get you can get into black by starting on white or black okay yeah i think i think i'm going to use both of my action cubes as black and we're going to gather intel so Roger just has to tell us whether the sniper is in the black sector or not. I am in the black sector. Oh, right. Okay. okay. So now we've yeah. got to make good use of our tracking cubes. We, we do. So we get these, uh, these tracking cubes. And basically, um, the rules are deliberately non-specific on how you use these cubes because we can use them however we want to. Um, right. right. Now, black has used both these cubes. So the, the black squad cannot do anything else other than the special ability that because that doesn't take an action but other than that we we probably want to start moving in now well, if he's in the black sector now he could yeah. have come in here yep and gone here or he could have come in here if he and if he came in black in that black entrance and he's still in black then the only place he could still be is if from that entrance is the very first space because if he had moved into the second space, he would have alerted that soldier. Yes. So this is the this is the key thing about the game, is adjacency works through walls. So if the sniper moves two or three spaces, and at any point in that move uh, has moved adjacent to a soldier, then that soldier will be alerted, and that counts through walls. So even though this sniper is here, and there is a wall here, as David said, if he moved one, he wouldn't make a noise. But if he moved two, he would have been here. That's adjacent to here. So this one would have heard him. So I think it's unlikely that he came in here and only moved one. I don't know. Yeah. You, you've played against him more, David. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree. I think for, for the people watching, let's do this. Let's put a tracking token in that space. Let's mark all the possible spaces he could be in, right? right. Okay. So that's one space possible space. Yep. Right. So then if he came in white, there's a few different black spaces he could have gotten to, right? So Or really just a couple. So it's that one there, and so I that's think it. that's it. So we now, in, in one action, or two actions technically, Yeah. but one, one thing, we've narrowed down all possible locations to two spaces on the board, unless we've missed something. But I yeah. think that's it. Yeah. yeah so now, I'm hoping, hoping the people watching understand how we've deduced that he's in one of those two spaces. I'll just go through it again. Even though the sniper can move three, if he had have moved two or three, this soldier would have heard something. So therefore we know if he came in on black, we know he's still in black, he can only have moved one. So he can't be here, which means he can't be anywhere there. And here, if he came in on white, the only space he could have reached that's in black is there, one, two, three. So I'm, I'm suspecting it's probably that one. I agree. Roger's played this I game agree. a few times. I think it's fair to say he might be he might be doing a bit of bluffing, so we'll see. It could be. Mm. So we don't have our black actions, you know, because um, it would be nice. So so if he's going that way, the the good thing for us is we've narrowed down the two possible spaces to include the most likely space. The bad news for us is we we've, we've spent our black actions. Yes. <laughs> and he could easily be going for number four, right? Because yeah. if you look at that bridge, that the the upper walkway, yeah, uh, number four is a good path, and yeah. so 
we need to start thinking about how do we close in on number four. Mm -hmm. um, so for, for me, I've got my officer on the upper walkway. And so can you move him on the walkway towards four, two spaces? Two spaces. So that's one action. So one of the actions, the, the defenders has actually got multiple actions. They can move, attack, spot, sweep, deploy, or dismiss a unit. Um, you can perform the same action twice, but not with the same unit. So a single unit can perform two actions, just not the same action twice. Uh, so the first action was to move, and you move up to two spaces. What do you want to do with your other action? I think, so, I think what we should probably do, I'm going to get your thoughts on this, that the uppermost soldier that I had, the soldier that's closest to four, this one. If we start bringing him around towards the la the closest ladder to four, mm. so like up up into the left, maybe. Yep. So what we've not explained is this particular map has elevated areas, and this walkway, which is all the one along here and around here and around here, and there's one over there. That is an elevated level. You cannot move uh, between the elevated walkway and and the floor below, except for these ladders. So if you're wondering what this section is here, this is actually a tunnel that goes underneath the walkway between these two areas. So the only way to get up to the walkway is there's a ladder here, there's a ladder here, here, uh, here, and here. And then there's a walkway over there as well. So if you're saying, David, you want to move it to there? I think so. What do you think about him coming around? He, I, I will also be in a good position to spot him on the walkway if I'm yeah. down there. But... Yeah, I think that's a good place because assuming he is going for four, once he's at four, he can't get off the The only way you can get off the walkway is there and here. Yeah. And you've got yeah. your officer here. So I think that's probably, yeah. a, probably a good move for that. Okay. Right. So, yellow squad. Now, yellow squad, the yellow officer is a kennel master. So twice during the game, we can basically deploy one of the dogs into a space on the board. Uh, and that dog will alert us if the sniper moves through or into its space. Um, yeah. Well, I, I think I'm possibly tempted to move this officer this way. Yeah. So I think that so. one's going to move there. Uh, the, all of the other actions, by the way, I mentioned that there's loads of actions to do, but these are all about attacking, spotting, and sweeping. That's what you do when you know the sniper is close to you. So there's no point us doing any of those at the moment. The only possibility is there is a dismiss action. So we could spend one of those yellow cubes and dismiss one of these yellow soldiers off the board. The reason for doing that is on a future turn, we can deploy a soldier next to the officer. But that can only be done if the officer is in his own sector. But it is a way of temporarily removing a soldier from the board, and then they can reappear the next turn next to the officer. But at the moment, if the officer's moved out of that area, can't do that. So I'm thinking possibly just bring this one round to there. I think so. Yep. Yep. OK, we're all done. So we're not, we've not used any of our special abilities. Uh, and it is over to the sniper for turn two. So the great thing about hidden movement games, and I always feel this way no matter what side I'm on, is I've well, I've lost. Like I've, I've okay. lost. I've already, I'm already done. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what I can do. All right, I've got the board set up here too, so I can kind of you know move my minis yep. so I can see a little better. All right. How many people do we have watching the video who have who own the game and just want to see the playthrough? And how many people are, uh, are, are looking to see what the game's about and just curious? Now, as I mentioned, the sniper on the sniper's turn, the three things they can do are move, use a loadout card, and perform an action. And they can do those three things in any order. There are three different actions that they can do in the game. One of them is to shoot, one of them is to complete an objective, and one of them is to loot an objective point that wasn't their objective. Um, but interestingly is if the sniper shoots, then you don't know whether they've moved before or after they've shot. Now, sometimes they might shoot and you don't know where the shot comes from. But when they do shoot, we're going to draw tokens out of this bag. And if noise tokens comes out, if two noise tokens come out, we know where the sniper is. But then, for all we know, the sniper might have moved afterwards. So uh, yeah, it's tricky. OK, I have moved, and no one was alerted. Nobody is alerted, and nobody's been killed. And no one's been killed. <laughs> yeah. Right, OK. Over to us again. So. So let's one thing, again, just for folks at home, that, that bottom 
tracking token that we had placed on the entrance to Black. Yeah. It's possible that it's possible he's now moved one space, either yeah. next to the ladder or forward. That, that's because a he could, he, yeah, he could have moved there and not alerted because he'd yeah. be sneaking, right? If he yeah. moved zero one spaces, uh, again, almost you know very unlikely, but it is possible. Yeah. Um. Otherwise, he could be very likely. close to four. He could potentially be there because right. moving three right. spaces is not adjacent to anything. So if it have if it have rushed along here and moved noisily, nobody was around to hear him. Yeah, and he could have moved downwards towards uh, objective one, as far as the two spaces adjacent to that soldier. Yeah, so they, he could not have moved into the last space because no. he would have alerted the soldier. Yeah. So those, I think, I mean, in my mind, those are the two most likely. You know, we could, uh, we could gather intel again in black just to make sure he's not there, but that seems useless. Yeah, I think um, I'd, I'd like to probably move some of the black soldiers out if we if we think if we think he might be in that space closest to objective four mm -hmm. i could move and spot that space with the red uh with the red soldier but that would leave me with no red actions yeah i i'm i'm thinking he's probably in one of these three spaces here yeah that's my thinking what, well, one thing we could do, if you think that, your officer is close enough, you could go and spot one of them, and yeah. if you find him, I can move my officer and snipe him. From that distance? I could, I mean, I could close, I could close as many as, one, two, I could have... Just thinking, there is this obstacle in the way. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, true, I might not a, be able to so shoot this around that. Yeah. This blocked line of sight. Yeah, it's yeah like I don't think I... Hmm. Uh, but, I could, but but you could draw it from any part of that space that he'd be in. So we might have a shot. He would definitely have a shot to the left of four. Let's just let's just have a look at my my line of sight ruler. So, but I'd be I'd move first, right? So I'd move him uh, up. Uh, you can't, with the sniper, you can't move. Oh, I can't move, can I? The officer uh, can't move this turn before you move the ability. First. Okay. He may move afterwards. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Good call. I was trying to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> because you also feel like you've already lost right? mm, that's right well based on my four plays of this game so far it's not been uh, it's not been good for the uh, for the defenders so um yeah we're going to try and turn that around today yep so it's it's probably going to be these two working together yeah agreed agreed so you can uh you can spot an adjacent space which if successful you add a, a noise token into the shot bag or sweep where you can sweep um two adjacent spaces but the spaces that you sweep have to be matching adjacent so there's a little bit of terminology that i'll explain here we've already sort of covered adjacent and adjacent is literally if your space borders another space the type of space whether it's uh, an open space uh, an elevated space or an enclosed space doesn't matter for the purposes of adjacency so this is adjacent to here, it's also adjacent to here. However, there is another piece of terminology that you need to understand when you play this game, which is matching adjacent. Matching adjacent means it has to be the same type. So if we look at this walkway here, for example, although all of the spaces touching it are adjacent, only the ones by either side are matching adjacent because they are also elevated spaces. And when the defenders sweep, uh, they can only choose two matching adjacent spaces. So basically this soldier here, if he was to sweep right now, he couldn't choose the walkway spaces, could only choose two of the ones around him. Um, yeah. I mean, we're assuming he's going for four. Yeah, he might not. He could be sneaking down he, towards he one. Down here. So he actually could have gone. He could also, here. that's true. He's, that's true. That's a good point. Yep. Yep. He could have gone your here, yellow, here. your yellow uh, officer could get to at least that space to check it out. Uh, not quite. Oh, I can move two and then sweep. Yeah, or and spot. That rules yeah. that out. Right. Oh, we could spot. Yeah, there's no no need to sweep when we don't. We know he's not in any of the other ones. Correct. Yeah. It could only be that one, couldn't it? One, two, three. Yep. One, two, three. Shall we do that yep. just to rule that out? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I think that's okay, a good call. So first action, yellow, is going to move 
two spaces. And then the second action, yellow is going to spot. So what we do is we choose an adjacent space. Uh, and if the sniper is there, we add a noise token to the bag if successful. Uh, so Roger, is the sniper in this space at the bottom of the ladder here? Oh, things have gone horribly wrong. Yes, I am. Oh, wow. You overlooked okay. that space the whole turn until the end. <laughs> Thank God. Oh, oh, thank God. So well, go there we go. The and... yeah. So we add a noise oh. token into the bag. Um, and do we put the sniper on the board? I think we do. We do, don't we? There we go. Yeah. I, think that, um, I think that the Kennel Master's dog sniffed you out. That's what <laughs> yeah, I something. Yeah. I'm going to get well, with I all think these we we know what Red's play is because Red can move to it and uh, and attack. Uh, I'm just gonna just gonna find a point on the camera. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Right. So there is the sniper. So he's obviously come in at the top, gone along the walkway, and then gone down the ladder, and he's now here. Right. Well, Yellow has had both actions. So yep. are you going to choose to move and attack yeah. with this one? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay. So one action is the movement action which we've seen now. Defenders are allowed to enter the space containing the sniper. That is totally allowed. And in fact, if we didn't actually know that the sniper was there, the defenders still move into the space, but the sniper doesn't have to declare it. The sniper like hides in a corner somewhere. But because we know the sniper is already there, that's the first action. The second action that David's gonna do is the attack action. Now the attack action can only attack the current space. Um, and sometimes you might wanna choose the attack action without knowing whether the sniper is there or not. In this case, we know the sniper is there, so we're attacking that space, and the sniper is wounded. If the sniper gets wounded again, it's game over. Right. Right. It's black. Black, I don't think, well, black can't go in and attack him uh, for two reasons. First of all, I can't reach it, but the other reason is you cannot have two defenders in the same space. So I would not be able to get in there and attack. Um, but I think Black's going to move with the officer and go there and there. And then I'm going to move with this one and we're going to go up the ladder and then there. And that is it. We are, we are done. So at the start of the sniper's turn, if the sniper miniature is on the board, it is removed from the board. But I'm going to put the, the little cube on there so they remind us. And then Roger takes his turn as normal. Um, we effectively knew exactly where he was, but he suddenly sneaked off, hidden behind a broomstick. <laughs> and uh, Leaving a trail of blood at this point. Yeah. Uh, now, this is tricky, because if you, if you only move one, then we know where you've moved to. So or he could, stay, he could stay in the same place. He could, he could move zero and stay in the same place. He could move zero, yeah. Yeah. But well, I mean, he, stay... he could be he could move up he could move a few different sp spots right he could yeah, move yeah, to yeah. the right of the red guy but yeah if he if he doesn't alert us there's only a few different places he can move yeah. to I, I'm suspecting there might be a shot coming here I think so absolutely <laughs> some one of those two people is dying this turn because yeah. we've not seen that part of the game yet so some of the great stuff you can do too right so uh, we haven't played a loadout card yet but the loadout cards are sometimes played face down. So you can play a face down load card to make the enemy think you have done sound masking and not yeah. move. That's a great ploy for those of you right. that are the sniper later. But what this sniper is going to do, because now he's angry that you that you shot him, yeah. is he's oh, going to no. use the trench gun nice. oh, no. and kill oh, both the red and the yellow soldier yeah. oh. without using the draw bag. So I'm going to read out the trench gun. It's the Winchester model 1897. When shooting this turn, do not draw from the bag. So you're still not going to see that part of the game. Instead, reveal your position. Oh, I wonder where he is. <laughs> right. <laughs> Perfect time to use it. Yeah. And then kill all enemy units in your space and on matching adjacent spaces. Now, normally, when you kill enemy units, tokens go into the bag. However, this specifically says that doesn't happen. All of these items are one use only. But what that does mean is that this red soldier here and this yellow officer have been eliminated. Now, we can we can bring them back on the game with, with a particular action. But for now, they have been removed. Right. And we now promise you, can, you can move noisily and we, we, won't, we won't hear you. And so we I should have... promise the people at home that we didn't set all of that up. <laughs> we, we did not set all of that up. <laughs> I don't think taking a wound was worth the setup, so no, that wasn't planned. 
Uh, but I have finished my turn. Okay, right. Yeah. So it's over to us. Now, as for where he is, literally could be anywhere now. Well, it, it could so be, but I mean, could, let's think. So oh, he yeah. can't He can't be going for white. He cannot have two, right? We know he doesn't because he started We know he white. doesn't have that because he started here. It, it seems unlikely, you know, if he had had four, it seems like he would have tried to go for four, even though we were kind of closing in a little bit on it. Yeah. Um, it doesn't seem like he would have gone. So probably, well, I was going to say he probably won't go up, back up the ladder, but it's Roger, so who knows? He could be trying to throw us <laughs> off now and go back up the ladder. So, yeah, that's, there's all sorts of places. Yeah, he, I mean, literally could be. Have, he can't have run up the ladder and then gone somewhere else without alerting that guy. No, no, because this, this officer here is adjacent to this space here. So, as David says, <clears throat> if he'd have moved one to there, we wouldn't have heard him. But if he'd have moved two or three, this, this officer would have heard some noise. I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to redeploy the yellow officer. Now, when you redeploy the officer, you can only do that if they're off the board and they come back on, on their starting point. I think that's the first thing I'm going to do. Yeah. Um. Hmm. I'm not sure what else to do. Let's see. And where do you think... He could be pretty far in red. Mm. I mean, I could gather intel in red. So just for people um, watching, these spaces here, these are water spaces. So they, these cannot be moved onto, but they do not block line of sight. However, the sniper does have a loadout card that allows them, uh, scuba gear, that allows them to traverse water spaces for a turn. So I say they, these can't be moved on. The sniper's got all sorts of tricks up his sleeve. Yeah, the sniper's a cheater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Well, let's, should we gather intel in black or red? Do you think, or should we just try to close in around where we think he might be? I don't think he's still in black. Okay. I I, I don't know why. And we can't, but, and we cannot gather intel in yellow because obviously you because because the officer wasn't there. Yep. And I've had to use one action to bring him back. I, I think I'd be tempted to move move with black rather than gathering intel. Okay. Now, when you move through these tunnels, I can basically move that counts as a space and then onto there. And again, if the sniper was here and I've just moved onto the sniper space, Roger doesn't have to declare that. You don't, you don't automatically find him. You've got to choose one of the other actions in order to, to search. Paul, do you think... Uh, I was going to say, do you think you should should have swept with that? That's your officer Actually, who just yeah. went through. Yeah, you're right. But Let's I, move this one back. Yeah. So the only reason... The yeah, the only problem with sweeping is that farthest space into red you can't reach, can you? No, no. So we'll, so we'll just have I'm, to accept it. Yeah, I'm going to choose the sweep action. So the sweep action, I choose two matching adjacent spaces to my current space. And then if the sniper is in either the space that I'm in or either of the two spaces that I've nominated, they have to say that they are in. They don't have to say which space they're in. They just have to say that they are in that one of those three spaces. So we're going to have all of the spaces around this junction, this here. So this space that's in the yellow sector, this space that's in the red sector, and the space in the black sector with the officer. So Roger, are you in one of those three spaces? I am not. Right. Right, so the black action's done. Um, I think for me, I'm thinking of either moving to the right with the officer and uh, deploying. Well, man. Mm -hmm. For the Don't for the designer who. For the designer who hasn't played the, his own game in a while, can I move a <laughs> can I move a soldier after I've deployed him? Yes. Okay. I'm I thinking of either so. deploying deploying the soldier next to the officer and then moving him down the ladder, or gathering intel in red. Deploying a soldier. If the squad's officer is in their own sector, place a soldier from that squad who is off the board in a matching adjacent space to the officer. Um, the soldier may be placed in a matching adjacent space in a different sector as long as the officer is in their own sector. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, what do you think? I, I'm either going to spawn the soldier next to the officer and then have him go down the ladder or gather intel in red. And if he's and if he says yes, we'll know what space he's in. Yeah, gathering intel in red, there's only one space he could possibly be in red. And yeah. that tells us whether he's there or not. Correct. But if we if if it's not there, right. have we benefited from that? Because he still could be there. He could be, yeah. I suspect he's gone this way. Okay. All right, then deploy the soldier. Oh, you think he's gone back towards yellow? I, I uh, think like he's a light looping yellow, around. To maybe go up that ladder and over to six, or maybe to five. Mm, okay. Um. But that's just a, you know, a random hunch. All right. Well, I think you've got that. I'm going to spawn him, and I'm going to have him go down that ladder. Okay. So action number one is to deploy the soldier, and soldiers deploy adjacent to the officer. And then action two is you're going to move it, and you're going to move one, two. Right, we've still got one yep. action with yellow. And I think I'm going to move this one to here. I think that's a good space. Right, over to you, Roger. Okay. Let's see what we can do. And this is this is my experience. I've, I've played this a few times in the last couple of days. My experience is, even when you manage to find the sniper, and even if you manage to get a wound on him, then the next turn the sniper's disappeared off, <laughs> and then trying to find them again right. is actually quite tricky. I mean, it has to be like that from a game design point of view, because otherwise, as soon as right. you find the sniper, it's game over. And yeah, there's got to be a game in there after the sniper's been spotted once. Okay, so I have taken a move, and I am placing one of my loadout cards face, face down, down on the table. Okay, so we don't know what this is, but Roger has played a face down loadout card. Now there's all sorts of things that that could be. It could be a, a mine, uh, which I believe Roger is famous for constantly yeah. using. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mine's or it could be noise suppression, <laughs> or it could be all sorts of things. But, but you've not shot yet, have you? I have not. If Soon. we get to the end of the game and Soon. we haven't actually shot anybody, we will go through how those rules work. No, we'll do it. Soon. <laughs> Soon. Did you bring your gun with you, Roger? I did. It's here. It's ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. It's up to us. It's our go. What are we going to do? Right now, he could be... He could be anywhere now. Yeah. Yeah. Could be anywhere over there, or pretty much anywhere over there. I see that. I think that's probably Pete on the Rebellion Unplugged um, yep. handle hosting. I, Roger wasn't being so elite when he got hit just a few turns ago. So. <laughs> on, on turn, I believe that was turn two. Yes, turn two. <laughs> um, I. I'm tempted to gather intel in yellow, but if we do, yeah. I can't use the Kennel Master's ability. So I think I'm tempted to sweep with this one here. Right. Sweep with this one, because using the Kennel Master's ability is not an action. Right. Yeah. Um, well, here's... Okay, let's think about the sequencing. What are we going to yeah. do with your black officer? Good question. Is he... Because if, if, if he... If we think he might be going around to the sub and we think that getting to those... Now, Roger, he could have been... So if he used sound masking, he could be almost anywhere. Yeah. Right? Um... Yeah, I mean, he could that, be... That is a card that's in the game. So, yeah. But... So the sound masking, for those people who don't know, is a loadout card that allows the sniper one turn to move two or three spaces and not be noisy. So all of those rules that we've gone over about, oh, if they move two or three spaces, then they make noise, 
there is one there is, there is actually two cards in the game so um uh yeah that that, that break that rule he could actually be on objective eight right now he could be on five could it be on eight it could be oh with sound masking yeah with sound masking so we've got all sorts um, of options. We could gather intel in red, we could gather intel in yellow, or we could do some sweeping around here. But is it worth sweeping around here if he might have... Yeah. I don't think... Yeah, it's tough. Um, I mean, even despite how famous Roger is for his S-mine deployment, it seems like that <laughs> wasn't the... He wasn't in like a choke point, you know? Yeah. Seems like sound masking was, was something he may have used... And, it, and he could be he could be running around to five. He could be running towards nine, or he could be running towards eight. Those seem yeah. like like he could be looping around to six also. But he mm -hmm. wouldn't. Yeah, these are all good, bad problems for us. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to gather intel. It's a matter so. of which which one does it. Red or yellow? Um, I'm thinking yellow. Okay, yeah, go for it. We're gonna gather intel in yellow. Are you in the yellow sector? I am not in yellow. Okay. That doesn't mean he's not here, but I'm starting to lean towards this area now. Yeah, I, I agree. He could he could be at the top of the ladder going towards six, still in white. But yeah. I think he could have gotten he could have gotten to yellow, and there's no reason not to. So if mm -hmm. he was going towards six, he would have gotten there. So I yeah. think you're right. I think he's probably in red. Um, you've gathered intel with yellow, so we can't yeah, do anything with that soldier. Yeah, and he's blocking yeah. the way for this officer. Right. So the worst case scenario for us would be if he's going for eight. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this. This is tough. Yeah. I think I'm going to move this one to here. Okay. I. Okay, I'm going to take that soldier that's by the ladder, and I want to move him up and, like, uh, to the right and then up towards this the way? door. Other way. Yeah, the other yeah. way. Okay. And block off that door. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then the other option is to take the guy out of the room or to yep. move the sniper soul officer up two spaces so that he's got a shot when he needs to. So we can either start moving that soldier to close off paths or move the sniper to get a, a shot off. What do you think? I think maybe the sniper. If we can get the sniper okay. to the corner here. Yeah, he's got blind of sight almost everything at that yeah. point. Yep. Okay. Um, so I'm going to move with this one. Okay, we're done. And the key for us now is to put the black soldiers in the best possible blocking positions because they're the medics soldiers. Yes. Yeah, so the, as, um, basically the black officer is a medic and when the sniper shoots a soldier in this squad, so not the officer, only a soldier, uh, I can immediately use this action to help keep them alive, and they remain on the board. It does not protect against mines. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now for the moment you've all been waiting for, I'm uh -huh. going to take a shot. Okay. Oh, right. okay. So here's, right. here's how the shooting rules work. The sniper player must decide secretly which of the defenders they're going for. They don't have to tell us. But then what happens is they must declare how many tokens they want to take out of the bag. Now, normally, it is the sniper player that takes the out of the bag. Obviously, for the purposes of this live stream, I'm going to do it. Um, and then they're looking for aim tokens. The number of aim tokens that they need is based on the range. So if they're attacking somebody in their space or one away, they only need one aim token. But the further it is away, the more aim tokens they need. Now, why don't they just draw loads of tokens out of the bag? It's because if they get two noise tokens, then the sniper's position is revealed. Also, 
if they draw a total of five recoil and or noise tokens, then it's a misfire and it automatically misses. So there is a little bit of a push your luck element to it. If you're going with a long range shot, you need to draw lots of tokens, but the more tokens you draw, the more noise it might make. So, Roger, without declaring which target you're going for, how many tokens do you want to draw out of the bag? I'd like to draw three. Three. Okay, so here we go. The first token is... It's an aim token. Second token is an aim token. And the third token is a noise token. So one noise token on its own doesn't do anything. But if there were two noise tokens, then uh, that would have meant that the sniper's position is revealed. So have you hit your target? So I, I did. I got the two successes. The yellow soldier next to the black officer is this gone. one. Right, okay, so we know that the sniper is currently within two of this space. But, David, I've got a question for you. Yeah. If, if Roger was two spaces away, would he have drawn three tokens? Or would he have drawn yeah. four? Uh, this is a strategic if was, question. If, if he was two spaces away, he would have probably drawn four tokens. Exactly. You That's what I'm thinking. Usually yeah, you usually only draw three tokens when you're in the same space or an adjacent space. Yeah. So I so this soldier is dead, but I'm suspecting that he's now the, he, now the tricky bit is that he could have moved after taking the shot. Yeah, exactly. So as I mentioned earlier on, the sniper player can do the three different things in any order. So he could have shot and then moved. And, and Paul, did you add an aim? Spaces, Oh, I didn't. Yeah, whenever the sniper kills a soldier, uh, we add another aim token into the bag. Now, does one of you want to explain thematically why I'm doing that? Yeah, the, the idea was that the sniper is gaining confidence and the enemy is becoming more scared. Yeah, there we so go. So the shots are becoming more successful. Right. Okay. And is that your go oh. done? And yeah, my turn is done. We've got, we've got a game on here, haven't we? <laughs> Nobody is... was alerted, Roger. Nobody was alerted. Okay. So, yeah, this is interesting. I mean, it it provides us some information. It provides us that at the time of the shot, he was probably adjacent, in the same space or adjacent to that, that soldier. Yeah. Um, but what's interesting is if he had taken the shot next to the soldier and gone into eight, that would be pretty bad. He might be um, here right now. I know, yeah. So... Again, just for the audience watching who don't know the game, completing an objective is an action. Shooting is also an action, and the sniper can only do one action per turn. So if he's shot, he cannot complete an objective on the same turn. Um, and a, play, a, a common mistake that new players fall into when they're playing the sniper is they move on to an objective, and then they think, ah, right, great, I've moved on to the objective. I'll now complete that objective. However, completing an objective reveals the sniper. So what you probably want to do is not be hasty and complete the objective and then move afterwards because then then the defenders don't know where you've moved to. So I'm suspecting he's probably was here, shot, and has moved into here. And if, he's, if he's, if he's guess, on eight, if he's on eight, if we think he's there, then the thing for us to do, obviously, is for my soldier to move in and attack eight. And, attack. and if he's on so eight, let's do it. It's a win. Okay, so yeah, first action it. of the game, Red Soldier moves to here. Second action is Red is going to attack this space. Are you on that space? I am not on that space. Oh. It was worth a try. It, it was worth a try. Worth it, was, a try. It, was, it was a little bit of a, a little bit of a long shot, but I, it was worth it. Okay. Do we still think he's in here, or is he sneaked around here? Maybe he's going for seven. He could have. Could have. Um, if we can use your, that's your officer that's in this black and near. Yeah. Yeah. I, your officer might be able to do some sweeping to that's figure right. out where. Yeah. He, maybe. Maybe those spaces. Yeah. Now I can only sweep matching adjacent spaces, so I can't yeah. move to here and also sweep. In there, I could only sweep the outside spaces. Wonder maybe that's maybe that starting soldier spot for red, mm -hmm. a couple of spaces down from you, and then kind of sweeping around those. Yeah, I think that's what maybe. I'm going to do. 
So black, first action is to move the officer to here. And then the second action is to sweep. So obviously the space that I'm in, which is the, uh, the soldier starting space, and also... Now, I, think for, I think for sure the one that connects into the room leading to seven. Yeah. Right? No, Isn't no, the one? other the, the oh, seven. Oh, this one. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think I think both of those spaces. So the one yeah, that leads into I, this room and the one that leads into this room. So yeah, those I think that's a good call. There. Right, so the soldier spot with the red dot. Yeah. One next to the door to seven and the one next to the door to eight. Yeah. You don't detect me. So you're not in one of those three spaces. Interesting. Okay. I, I tell you what, I think he's gone gone to the pub. I think he's left. He's, he's, he's gone home. <laughs> gone to the That's pub. Right. <laughs> this is nonsense. i got to go bandage this wound. Yeah. <laughs> Using a, an optional rule from Roger's personal copy of the game. <laughs> it, is, it is possible that he entered seven. Entered that, he, you know, one, one more space could, further could, than what he, he could just be in there. He could be in yeah. here. Just he could hiding be. in the corner. Yeah, one of Again, those two. What you said earlier on, uh, just before we started the stream, and I've, I've not reached this point with this game yet, but if you play this game repeatedly with the same group, you are going to start learning some tricks. Mm -hmm. Like, we all knew that it's a good thing to do for the sniper to go on to eight, and then at the start of his next turn, complete the objective and run away. We knew that. Roger knew that we knew that. Yeah. And therefore, yep. he might be going. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll just sneak in here. So there, there is, uh, there is a bit of that in the game as well. We've entered the Princess Bride now. <laughs> we have. <laughs> yeah, I was also going right. to quote Donald Rumsfeld as well. <laughs> anyway, it's yellow. What's yellow going to do? Everybody else has done something, so it is just yellow. Uh. I don't know. Well, I think you could bring that that soldier that's around nine. Maybe just bring him out of the door. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Just block that off. Yeah. And it might as well, if if nothing else, just respawn the soldier so we have him available to us, right? I was thinking of that, or I was thinking of dropping one of the dogs. Oh yeah, or, sure. Yeah. So, because yeah. we haven't used that yet, so yellow is going to move. So the officer is going to move to here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these special abilities, because we haven't used these specialists at all yet, um, but I'm going to use the special ability. So this is a dog. We're going to put a dog token there. So basically, if the sniper moves into or through this space, the dog is alerted. Right, we're all done. What's he going to okay. do? Is he going to shoot again? Mm. So you've got one loadout card used. The trench gun has been used, that's gone. You've got one that you've played face down that we're not sure what that is, and you've still got one in hand. I'm just making sure I have all my minis where you yep. have them. I can put the uh, I can put the other view on if that helps. Oh yeah, actually that's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm done. No noise, no, no one, shooting. No shooting, no one was alerted. No objectives, right. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Well. I mean, the one thing we, there, there is a rule, and I don't even know if I mentioned this rule, I might have done, but the sniper cannot move into a space containing a defender. So the fact that we've got this yellow officer, uh, this yellow soldier here in front of this door, we know that the sniper cannot move into that space. They have to do something to get rid of them first. So I think if, assuming that Roger's where we generally think he is, which is somewhere in around eight and seven, the key to, to winning this turn is to your your officer, the black officer. Okay. If we can figure out, if we can deduce which of those two he's going for somehow, then both those soldiers are in position for the winning kill. Yeah. Um, he could have moved on to seven. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, we can spot through the wall, right? So I think you mentioned this, but there's a... 
a very important difference between spotting one space that's adjacent to a defender and scanning yeah. or, or sweeping around. So, yes, yeah, sweeping no has clue. to be matching adjacent spaces, but spot is just an adjacent space. Yeah. Are you thinking that I should go one, two and sweep in here? Yeah, or or spotting seven, one of those two. I think sweeping will get us three spaces. Yeah. Where was, yeah, so I'll, I'll do that. So Black is going to move into there, and then I'm going to sweep the three spaces in the room. You don't detect me. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. We've ruled out seven, because there's we've no reason. Out. Yeah. If, if he was going for seven, he would have been in there. So I think we've, we yeah. can rest easy. How are you feeling about eight? I think if he, if he was going for eight, and he was either in there or near last turn, he would have probably got rid of this one. He would have shot him, and then... I think so, too. Yeah, yeah. I think so, too. Or he's, what or is he's he gone up? over here. He's, he's, he's maybe gone over to yellow. Yeah. Well, you know what we could do? I don't know that... Without knowing anything else, what, what else we're going to do in yellow but gather intel in yellow, right? Should we do that? Yeah, I think so. Yep, uh, gather Smart intel on yellow. Are you in the yellow sector? I'm not in yellow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> My goodness. Where's he gone? Well, you know what we could... I mean, if we don't know anything else, we can have the soldier that's already in eight sweep around eight. Yep. yep. Right? So let's have him sweep the three space... The space by the door. Uh, the door... Yes, there. Then the space one down from it. And then... The space by the other door. Well, you uh, can only choose two spaces, spaces and then it's oh, the one. Sorry, yes, of course, of course, of course, yes. Those two spaces, sorry. Yep. So that one, that one, and that one. Yep. Yeah, you can't be in that space with him, but that's fine. You don't detect me. Oh, Paul, what's happened? <laughs> I don't know. He slipped through our fingers. Uh, when was okay. the cloaking device invented? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now let's just move the sniping officer up two spaces so he's even better positioned. Yeah. And then we'll. Okay, right. Now. I'm running out. We have got him down to four. Uh, it's turn four on this countdown. He's got, to get, he's got to get an objective soon. Yeah. You know, he could have been. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. It could have been really sneaky and doubled back and come up the ladder and do exactly, it. <laughs> yeah, or gone gone underneath the walkway there and yeah. going towards three yeah. or even one. Oh my yeah. goodness, we do not know. And just as a reminder, if you're watching this, as soon as the sniper has got the first objective, the timer resets. Okay. It's interesting because this game has got tension on both sides. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, this is a crucial decision. Let's see. There's a there is a rule at Roger. I don't know if you remembered or not that the sniper can give up if they want to. Can just can so, resign. Can just resign. That's right. So. And I assume that the the Nazis they clap him on the back, walk him to the door. Everything's fine. If yeah. I, if he was yeah, up, that's yeah, right. It's all good. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Sitting down, give him a PlayStation. <laughs> I did. Okay, I did I, try, David, giving us a little bit of an advantage. I I sent um, I sent some furniture removal people round to Roger's house this afternoon. With the instruction of installing a secret camera in his room, but yeah. so you're actually yeah. looking over my shoulder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that little red light, flashing light in the corner, isn't your smoke detector. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, I have completed my turn. No yeah. one was alerted. Oh no my one was goodness. alerted. No shooting. No objectives being completed. Right, off we go. Well, I think I think if we think there's a chance he's doubled back to black. The best thing we can do is me gather intel in red to confirm he's not in red, right? Yeah. Then we still have our black action. So yeah. I'll gather intel in red. Okay. Oh, I you're am in red. red. I am. You are. Right. Um, okay. Oh, my goodness. So. What's 
What's he doing in red? I think he's waiting for us to get out of position before he makes completes one of those two objectives. That's my guess. That's my guess. Though, you know, had he had he gone all the way to the ladder in the bottom right, he would have had to sneak around a lot because yeah. of that the position of that soldier. And so he yeah. could be creeping. So he's in red now. Do we think that he's going for one of the red objectives? I think he has to be with such a limited amount of time left. Yeah, I don't know if there's enough time. I mean, the only thing he could potentially be doing is creeping towards three, but still be in red. Okay. Yeah. What am I going to do with this officer that's in this room? Do we do we sweep again? Are you getting the, uh, could be when you moved in? No, <laughs> yeah. Wait, well, when you moved in and swept, he can't possibly now be in that uh, oh, room. Can't. No, because he can't have been on your space. He wasn't in right. those three spaces. That's right. Ah, no. So that that, that yeah. room is totally protected. Yeah. So he's he's not in there. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if nothing else, a soldier that's by three could move on to three. Yeah. Right. Just in case he's going for that one. Or even just outside. Yeah, that's either one of those is fine. Yeah. So black soldier will move to there. Now the black soldier could sweep. Yeah, that's a great call. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, okay, sure. We'll do that. So I'm going to yeah. sweep these three spaces here. So the bottom of the ladder, space next to it, and the space with the soldier in. You don't detect me. Okay. So that's that's here. So he's not here. Okay. Uh, that's black. Both actions have been used for black. Both actions have been used for red. So it's just yellow. Yeah, yellow is interesting. I mean, we're in a position with yellow where if we start doing well, I guess you could you could always respawn or you could deploy that soldier. Yeah. There's that's good. Yeah. The other one by nine, it's I don't really know if there's any reason to move him. No. We don't want to overcommit. So I'm going to move this officer as my first action, and then as my second action, because the officer is in his own sector, I'm going to deploy this soldier to there. Okay, okay. we're done. Make sure I've got. Well, it's certainly right. not the 20 minute game we thought it might be. <laughs> no, it was, it was looking lightning fast there for a second. It was. Okay, let's take a shot. Okay. Oh, and how I'm... many tokens am I drawing out? I will pull four. Four. Okay, here we go. One. Two. That's a recoil token. Three. I think this is probably a hit. Four. So. Oh, excellent. Who's All been right. killed? The soldier standing on eight. Oh, it was eight all along. So we're just standing on eight. So one more aim token is going to get added into the bag. Okay. Oh. He said he was, he's hiding in that corner for a couple of turns. Well, yeah, and yeah. now we know that he has to go for eight, but we're out of position to get him. Yeah, and we also so, know that if he's going for eight, then he's also not going for four and seven because he cannot have two objectives right. in the same sector. That's right. That's right. And I don't think, I mean... You know, he could he could kill. He has to be in that room to kill eight. I mean, I don't know if you want to talk about line of sight just a little bit for shooting yeah, in and out. Yeah, we of haven't a, really a focused on line of sight that much. But basically, to determine line of sight, you draw an imaginary line from any edge of the space that you're in to any edge of the space that you're targeting. Now, the interesting thing with the line of sight rules in this game is that you can see into an enclosed area from outside of the enclosed area. So all of these rooms and buildings have got lots of windows all the way around them. Now that doesn't mean you can see through them, you can see into them. So for example, if, if this guy was here and the sniper was here, then the sniper does have line of sight through that window and into there. But if he was there, he would not have line of sight. So you, you, you can draw line of sight into or out of an enclosed area but not through an enclosed area. So yeah, so you can't just hide inside a building and think, 
you're immune from being shot at. Um, but what we're saying is if we look at this room specifically, and let's just have a closer look at this room down here. Uh, so yeah, if we look at this room here, um, the only place that has line of sight to this space must be in the room. Every space in that room has line of sight to every other space in that room. And this space cannot be seen by any space outside. So we know that when he took the shot, he was definitely in this room somewhere, but he may have now moved on afterwards. We don't know. I'm just gonna put we, we also know, and this, is, this gets into some, some fairly nuanced sequencing, but we also know that he didn't run into the room from outside the room adjacent to the soldier and then shoot him because Correct. he would have alerted the soldier before he shot him. Yes. Yeah. So he could have he could have moved one space into the room or he could have already started in the room, but yeah. he did not run into the room. Yeah. I suspect so, he was probably in the room, waited there for a little bit. Yeah. Shot this one. Uh, and then and moved may have on now moved it. onto it. Yeah, he's almost, I mean, because of the amount of time he's got left, he's almost certainly on, I mean, I would, I would bet he's on eight now. Yeah. We can't yeah. get to him, so we have, to, we have to basically try to close out that yeah. spot as well as we can. And it's how we go, isn't it? It is, yeah. So, well, I think yellow is going to move to there. Yeah. Um... Can you move the soldier that's next to seven? Can you move him to the right? I would move him out of the door and then one more space. There? Uh, no, like um, underneath that pillar, but kind of by the ladder. There. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think so. What do you think? And then. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because if he comes out this way, he's, he's right. got to go through there. Yep. Um, I think the kennel master is going to leave the other doggy there. And then move two to there. So again, using the special ability doesn't actually cost an action. Yep. Um, Black is going to move one, two to there. And I think we're just going to move this one to there. So you've got one red action left. <sighs> Sniper's in a good I position. Guess. He is, yeah. I'm going to deploy the other red soldier on... Can I be there or there? Yeah, I think objective four. Yeah. 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 Okay, we're all done. So, I'm suspecting okay. you're about to complete an objective. Right, yeah, so we'll go ahead and do that. I complete okay. objective eight. Yeah. So, to complete an objective, the sniper appears on the board, and we take a noise right. token, and we put it into the bag. Okay, and then presumably he's going to move, but we don't know. <laughs> well, I suspect, <laughs> suspect he's not moving, but we know that he can't move onto that space because you can't move into a space containing a defender. He could move here, but if he does, this officer will hear something because that's two away. So he's either going to move one, or he might move two to here or here. Yeah. So, and and reset all of our action tokens for us. Oh yes, the the timer resets. There you go. Uh, could be there. Could be there. Could be there. So somebody asked the what are the blue tokens on the officers? Yeah. So whenever an officer is killed, this is a suppression token. As a bonus for killing the officer, this token gets added into the bag. And what a suppression token does is it cancels a noise token. So, uh, yeah, every suppression token that's drawn cancels a noise token, which is good. However, remember, when you are shooting, you need to draw a number of aim tokens based on the range. So the more of the more non-aim tokens that you add into the bag is going to mean that you're going to have to draw more tokens in future. So bearing that, bear that in mind, when you're drawing tokens later on in the game, there are other tokens in the bag as well. Okay, I have completed my turn. Okay, right. No, no one's alerted. And no cards were played, right? And no cards were played. Okay. Okay, so Paul, you've already marked all the possible locations, there, haven't they you? They are all the possible locations, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh, all there oh boy. as well. Yeah. So, 
if this yellow soldier stays here, then he can't move out of there. We know he's not there because if he if he was on eight and he moved two, this officer would have heard something. Therefore, we know he's not there at the moment. So if this officer moves there, that blocks that exit. And then we've just got down here. Yeah, I and mean, we know, okay, so we know that he doesn't have objective two and he doesn't have any objective in red. So yeah, that could, it, you know, that might help could us. could be yellow and black. Try. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that I'm going to do anything else with red anyway. So what we could do with the red soldier is move him towards the room with eight, two spaces, and then sweep the space he's in and the space adjacent to him. Yeah. Or he could search the space he's in. What do you, or attack it? What well, do you attack think? Attack the space he's in and, and just yeah. yeah. If, if you if you get it right, we've won. Yep. Let's do it. I'll attack that space. Okay. Going to attack that space just outside the room. Are you there? You do not find me. Okay. That's Red's two actions done. I don't think he would have gone to that space outside the room next to Red. Right? It doesn't seem. Well, maybe. Maybe. So I think I'm going to move yellow officer to here. So that's that blocked. If he was uh, if he was inside that room next yep. to the yellow officer, and we so if you were to spot with the yellow officer, he was there. Your black officer could get to him. Um. That is true. So, all the all other things being equal, that's the most you know beneficial spot for us to be. Mm. I'm just thinking this: if he's come out, he could be here. Right. That's true. Yeah. So. Yeah. Probably. In retrospect, I probably should have swept, but. So I think what I'm going to yeah. do is I'm going to spend the other yellow action token. I'm going to leave that one there. Leave that one there. And bring that one to there. Okay. Just in case he's staying in the room for a turn to throw us off the scent. Yep. No, that's good. That's good. Um, and then black. Black is going to move to here and also attack this space. Do not hurt me. I'm not there. Okay. Right. That's it. That's our go. We're done. It's all of our actions done. Right. But that. Right. So he's he's not in this space. He's not in that space, which means he is still in the room. If 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 he's I've, under, if I've got this he's correct. Yeah, I don't think we did, unless we missed something, and I don't think we did. Let's hope not. Okay, so we are taking another shot. Right. How many tokens? I'd like to pull three, please. Three tokens. Okay, so the first token drawn is a recoil token. Second token is an aim token. And the third one is another recoil. So two Ooh. recoils doesn't do anything, but that is <laughs> only going to be a successful shot if it's range one. Good good thing I drew three. Okay, so the red soldier blocking the doorway to the room of eight is dead. Right. Okay. We, know, we know exactly where he is. Where, where he was when he took the shot. There, yes. Yeah, that's where he was when he took the shot. However, and it, make black, sure to add an aim, I'm aim, token, an aim token in there. Right. Yeah. And the black officer is alerted. Yeah. So he's moved. Now, he's he's moved two or three. So he's not okay. there. And he's not where he started. So he's either there or there. Or he's actually run that way. He, he would have alerted those guys if he oh, ran he next to the those. door. Not that yep. one. So, could be so that. there's one super sneaky thing. Yeah, he could he could be hiding in that corner trying to be super sneaky. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's like next level sneaky. <laughs> 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 okay, so I'm pretty sure he, he's come out and he's probably here. Probably, probably. And I can't get to him from there. It's yeah. too far away. But your sniper could. My sniper has a shot. It's a long shot. It goes to a it lot is. of stuff. 
One, but, two, three, four, five. Now, you can, with the sniper, you can only draw a maximum of seven tokens. That's right. And his and I used the sniper's bag, and he's got a junky bag. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of bad tokens in here. Then again, there's a lot of there's a lot of aim tokens in here as well. He's been killing a lot of soldiers. Okay, so I do yeah. I do need to tell you a thing. We won't take the effect because I missed it because I was so focused on getting out of that room. The yellow officer next to the room to eight stepped on a mine last turn. So oh. he is theoretically dead, but I won't insist you remove him, but you need to know that the card is now revealed. Why don't you That's just why, why don't That's you just fine. take the card back then? Because I don't know we we learned information that we wouldn't have you know what I mean? Yeah, well, that I mean that's I think it's okay. I mean I'm happy I'm happy yeah. to remove it. Yeah, he that's he fine. definitely stepped on it last turn. It yeah. has been there okay. for three turns. Yeah, yeah, okay. so we'll, we'll, right. we'll just remove it. That's that's fine. Now, if a mine goes off and kills an officer, do you get the suppression token in the bag? Do not. Okay. okay. Right. Oh uh, wait, maybe I no, I don't think so. Yeah, it's not on the card, but no, I think not. Okay, that's only if you shoot him. Right. I don't know. I think it. I think it. I think he does because I think it will tell you specifically if he does it. Like the uh, trench. Yeah, yeah, I think David's right. Well, the, yeah, if, you're if probably you don't right. Add the token. It specifically says so. So that. Right. How many times token. are you going to kill the yellow officer this this time? <laughs> I mean, he's just he's you know a good target. I don't know. Okay. So that first that his card yeah. we now know was an S mine, which means yeah. we know it wasn't the sneaky movement. Not that that helps us now. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Well, I think. Hmm, man. Mm. He's in one of these two spaces. I'm pretty sure. I don't think he's run away and gone in a corner. No, I, I agree. I agree. I mean, your black your black officer can get to that one space, but I don't I know could, why I could he would have. Move here in a time, but then if he's here. Yeah, I just don't know why he would have stopped there. No. Um, can the sniper officer move after he snipes? He just can't move before? Correct. Is that right? Yeah. That's right. I mean, I could take a ridiculous long shot and then move yep. down the down the thing. So, I mean, there's no reason not to, right? So... You're going to go for it? Do we... Do Well, do we want your... Yeah, no, let's do that. Let's do that. I'll shoot that spot. So, I, I can pull up to seven, right? So, I'll Maximum pull Maximum of seven tokens. Yep. Oh, I don't like being on the other side of this. How many? Seven? All seven. All seven. Here we go. Right. First token. And we need one, two, three, four, five. Assuming you're in that space. So the first token is a name token. It's a good start. Second token is noise. Oh. Third token is a name. Yes. <laughs> no stressful. Suppression. Oh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so these all have to be aim tokens now. No. Oh no. The rest after that. Right. Oh, that was a suppression. I thought that was an aim. Oh. No. Oh there no. You go. So oh. we only got range three. So we didn't hit right. even if you were there. Even if I was there. Okay. Well, I'll move the sniper down um, two spaces. Two spaces. Okay. No, but that was just, it's, uh, shooting. The shooting take an action. Uh, oh this? no, it's not. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's not an action, is it? It's a special ability. No, it's the, it's the ability. Yeah, right? yeah. And then I'll I'll deploy this the soldier below the sniper. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Okay, so that is an action. Okay. Um. So trying to work out what to do with this officer i think so for yellow here and spot mm -hmm. yeah so i'm going to move you'd two be to next there to and we're going to spot the space where we've just sniped possibly should have done that there. first you are there yeah, i am there i thought so, so oh, takes, there, he, which means a noise takes a noise in the back that's right. Okay. Okay. And then we've got yellow. Yellow is still to move. Yep. So at this point, I think we just bring them both down. Or do you respawn your officer? Probably bring them down. I think you're probably right. Now, now Paul, he's going to black, right? Yeah. 
So I don't know if you want to bring him down that way. Well, yeah, because you can cross under the walkway there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah, I think you're right. There you go. We're done. Yep. Yep. I think this is going to be tricky for Roger. I think. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Pete corrected us. The sniper ability impacts their attack, so it will count as an action. Does it? The officer uh, it's it's the, it is their attack action. Okay, oh, so I cheated. We're attacking this turn. So okay, so we don't. So deploy. undeploy. Yep. 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 Okay. okay. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Well then. I've been playing while well, Roger's thinking about this. I've been playing this with my kids nonstop, and my kids are are eleven and eight. But we don't play without the spe we play without the special powers. Mm. So it's funny. I've played the core game, what I consider like the core game, a lot. But I'm I, I'm rusty on the powers because I haven't played those in a couple of years. So now that variant is not an official variant, is it? Not an official variant, but it, I'm going to I am going to write an article. I'll joke in this. I'm going to write an article about how to teach non gamers. Yeah. Because I think there's a lot of video gamers coming into it, maybe. And yep. then, you know, younger younger gamers, like the sequence for how to teach them the game. Yeah. Because you basically have them play as the defenders with no special abilities, then it's the sniper, and then you introduce them to more and more maps. Yeah. So, I can hear Roger thinking. <laughs> yeah, the... <laughs> Wheels are turning, Jackie. grinding. This is actually quite a good game to play remotely. Hidden movement games. It is. This is cool. This is perfect. Yeah. He's going to go up the ladder and then hide in that corner. In here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm done. The officer that I started next to is alerted. Yeah. So he's heard some noise, which means you're not there, but you could be no, not there because they would have heard something. Not there because he would have heard something. Not there, it could be any. He couldn't be at the top of the ladder because he wouldn't have alerted. That's true. So I think those are the possible spaces. And I'm wondering if he's doubled back. Yeah. Because we've got this soldier here, we've got this officer here. They're all moving in. Yep. He's still got eight turns left on the tracker, so if he, if he was going for black, there's still time for him to double back, sneak out here. Yep. <sighs> yeah. But... I could use both of my black units to find out if he's here or here. Yeah. Because I can yeah, swap I... from here to here. Mm hmm Oh, no, I, I then can't move that one and then... Yeah. Mm. But if you... Mm, this is interesting. If you were to spot that space with the officer and he's not there, then I could probably just go ahead and move and attack the other spot, right? And that rules those two out. Yeah. Should we just do that? See what happens? I think at this point. So I'm going to spend my first action. This officer is going to spot this space here. I am there. You are there. Right. Uh, okay. So now let me tell you where it all went horribly wrong. I ran up the ladder with the plan of shooting the other sniper and then realized if I shot him, he would come back on the board yes. right there. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So I knew I could not shoot him or he would have an easy shot on me when he came back. Yeah. Well, 
we, the only way for us to win this turn is for me to successfully snipe him, right? You, yep. The sniper does have a line of sight to here. Right. So let's try to kill the sniper with the sniper. How many <laughs> okay. do I need to kill? Uh, it is one, two, three. Let's do it. Pull in seven. Seven tokens. Seven tokens. Okay. First token is recoil. Second one is an aim. Third one is a suppression. Good start. Good start. Fourth one is an aim. Okay, there it is. There's the third aim. Oh, yes. yes. But oh, no, I think, I think that's still... it. You yeah. can't misfire, right? Yeah, can't, you're you not can't gonna misfire because we're not doing enough fire. tokens. There you go. Second no. wound on the sniper. Sniper well is done. done. Yes. What a game. Oh, we make a good team. We do. Now, I've played this four times in the last couple of days. To be fair, they were learning games. I suspected that the game with you two was going to be my best game of it yet, and it didn't disappoint. That was fantastic. Oh. That was That was, that was so... Fun. And it could have, it was, it was good because we got you early and then you managed yeah. to get away. And all of a sudden it's like, where's he gone? Where's he gone? Now yeah. let's have a look at your board. All right. And, and before you I do hold that, your board up, I'm just here's gonna... a lesson, a, a lesson for everyone at home. Yeah. Don't get caught at the end of the game with a rock that could have turned a three shot into a five shot. Right. Should have thrown that rock and put that <laughs> officer right back at the end of the walkway. Okay, so I'm just going to make uh, I'm just going to make this a lot bigger. So this is the board that Roger's been using to track his movement. The numbers that he's put on there are just to track which turn he was, and that's what you use to yeah. So that that's that part of the game that you didn't see, uh, which is the hidden movement part. Right. Of it. So there you go. And so you can you can see on turns five, six, and seven where I did indeed just hide in the corner next to eight. Yeah. Waiting for your soldier to leave, but he was very diligent. He never left. Yeah. And never... That's, that's one thing that I've learned from the couple of games, the few games that I played yesterday is the temptation as the sniper is like, right, I've done that. I'm now going to move as fast as I can to the next objective. But actually staying where you are for a couple of turns can just throw the defenders off, assuming that you've moved. So... Right. Yeah. Well, there you go. Thank you very much, you two, for playing. That was fun. Oh, yeah, was that was awesome. Now, just before we finish, I'm just going to show people the other side of the map. So this is actually the submarine pens. This is not the map that is recommended when you first play it because this has elevated areas, which add a little bit of extra rules, not much more. Uh, the basic one, which is recommended for your first game, is uh, the launch facility. Now, the reason we didn't use the launch facility today is that there's already been quite a few videos from other channels on this game, and they were using the launch facility map. But this is what you should use when you first play the game. Again, what you have is you have the nine objectives, you have the four different sectors, but interestingly, the white sector is actually split into two. Um, but other than that, you've just got lots of rooms, you've got open spaces. In the expansion set, talk us through the first of these, which is this one. This is Elite Nest. I no, Eagle's Nest. Eagle's, yeah, Eagle's Nest. Eagle's Nest. Yeah. Which is the name yeah. of the expansion. So tell us a little bit about this map. Do you want to talk about Roger? This is yeah. your, your brainchild, I think. Yeah, sure, sure. So this you know, represents Hitler's Eagle's Nest, his, his uh, re mountain retreat. And some interesting things about this map, you'll notice that the black entry point is actually in the middle of the map. It's an mm -hmm. elevator shaft that Carl can climb up. So that's different from all the other maps. You can actually start in the middle of the action, not on the edge. And then the line of sight rules are affected by the walls of the rooms. You can't see from one room to the next. So right. uh, you're shooting through doorways and down hallways. And so pretty different, more claustrophobic feel to the, to the Eagle's Nest. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. that map. And then we have the big one, which is Heavy Water, which you've told me off record is your favorite map. And I think the right. Rebellion also said this was his favorite map. And the first thing yeah. you'll notice about this map is the scale is much larger and we have lots more open spaces. So I've not played on this map yet, but I imagine this has got a de very different feel to it. It does. So this is a mission simulating, you know, attacking a heavy water plant in, uh, in theoretically in France and Norway. I can't remember where we said it. 
But the thing that I like about this map is uh, one of our initial concepts was the varying space sizes, allowing you to move really quickly, shoot really far along roads and open areas, and yeah. then the claustrophobic feeling of creeping around the villages. So this map shows that the best, right? It's hard to get around, but if you can get to a road, you can move really fast. Yeah, you can cover spaces the spaces are big spaces on the roads. Right. So you can go one, right. two, three, whereas going through the fields would be one, two, three. Yeah, it would be a right. lot more. And then this has the uh, the cliffs, you know, over there next to the dam. Yeah. Where you can actually use the climbing gear to go between spaces you normally can't go between. Right. Which also shortens. Okay. So shortens the paths. Yeah. So they, yeah. Uh, I think that's my favorite one to play on. Right. Really. Okay. Cool. So yeah, and views on player count because a couple of people I've spoken to have said this is really a one v one game, and they wouldn't recommend it with multiple players playing the defenders. I personally completely disagree with that statement, but that's because I like team games. I like yeah, working with somebody yeah. and talking to them to try and work something out. So, and, and last night I played two games of it, which were both four player games. And it was really good to see, we swapped around the sniper between games, but it was really good to see three people all talking together, working out the puzzle together. I don't think I'd want to play this 1v1 when I had the job of the defenders of trying to work out all of that stuff myself. I like the idea of, of kind of working out the puzzle with somebody else, personally. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I mean, I, I, I like playing it. I, I guess I like playing it anyway, you know, cause like I said, I've been playing with my kids a lot and it's, it is, yeah. we do play a lot of 1v1, but but um, I definitely agree. My preference when I'm playing as the defenders is definitely to play with other people, but I, like you, love team games. So, yeah. 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 And I don't and think, I mean, I guess, you know, I guess you could have alpha gamer, but there's no, just like, very seldom was there a right or wrong. I don't think there ever was in the entire game we just played, right? Yeah. It's, it's, you know, what, what do you think about this? And there's no right or wrong, so... Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's more fun playing as the sniper when there are multiple defenders too, because you did it. You two did an excellent job not talking each other out of things, but usually the defenders will talk themselves out of finding <laughs> where you are, which is very fun to watch. It's really right. fun to. Yep, that's the right place, and you talked yourself out of it. Yeah. What What was that giggling noise we just heard in the corner? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, the other thing that the expansion set brings is alternative snipers as well. So the base sniper, uh, you said was was Carl, and that is basically it's fixed. He starts with certain tokens in the bag, but the expansion set has four additional snipers which change the loadout mix uh, that you start with, and they each have a special ability as well. I think is that right? That's right. Yep. Yeah, they each have their own starting loadout and their own special, unique special ability. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Right. Anything else you two want to add? before we wrap things up. No, this was fun. Thanks for yeah, thanks for having us on. This was really awesome. Yeah, yeah this was yeah. good. That was a fun game. Yeah, yeah it was. It, it definitely was. So before we finish, a big thank you to Rebellion uh, Unplugged for asking me to create this video. And also a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters that helped fund the channel. If you like the content that I create, obviously give the video a thumbs up, leave me a comment. Um, but if you are in a position to be able to support me on Patreon, that would be fantastic. Patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Uh, we're certainly going to. I'm going to disappear now over to the Gaming Rules Slack channel, and we're going to have a discussion about the game. And I'm interested to see what uh, what my supporters thought of the playthrough tonight. But that's it. I'll say goodbye to you two. Thank you very much. We'll play another game at some point again, no doubt. And um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining me. Great. Thanks yeah, for having, thanks us. having us. Okay. Yeah. And we'll see you all next time. Take care. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you all soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.